Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I'm answering a big question today. We're talking about when to sell. A lot of you guys have made investments. You're making coins. The, the cards have gone up crazy amounts in value. I want to talk to you about when you can sell these cards, optimize your profit, and keep yourself safe from dropping prices and cards that are going to be going down in the next couple of weeks with FIFA continuing the full game release happening, the early access time frame happening. Honestly, a lot of these cards, especially some of the lower rated ones, we're going to be looking at shipping these out in the next two to three days, honestly, as the early access time frame is approaching. That's a big time frame where a lot of packs are open. A lot of new people get on the game that didn't have the EA access or maybe just started on the web app and then didn't have the EA Play 10-hour trial and just pre-ordered the game. And then when the full game releases... There's a whole new wave of people that just get on the game for the first time as well. So we're going to talk about this kind of stuff, when to sell some of these investments that you've made early on that have boomed in price. So again, uh, Joe Gomez, right? I'm actually going to go to FootWiz for this because FootWiz has got graphs as of right now that show you the prices and their fluctuations and their rise basically over the past uh, time right now, Joe Gomez is 100k. He's probably going to be a different price when you're watching this video, but he's definitely going to be more than what he was earlier in this time frame of 30,000 coins. So I am recording this a bit early, but the concept is the same. So this is what I want to talk about today: timing the sale, T especially just thinking about what is upcoming in the game that we need to prepare for, we need to know is coming, and we know is actually on the radar for things that are going to be coming content wise. We're not getting that once to watch SBC or the player pick vote until October 5th and 6th. So any SBC fodder stuff that you want to invest in, you can kind of chill on that for a couple of days. We just don't need to mess with it. And that's not going to affect any supply or anything on the market. The only supply these cards are having are SBC cards uh, or SBC supply. If there's any pack supply SBCs that would come out, that'd be a change and that'd be different, but I don't expect that. But honestly, just the advanced SBCs and then people opening FIFA points right away at the start of the game, which a lot of people are going to continue doing on that early access time frame. So big dates to know for a lot of these cards, right? Sunday, squad battle rewards. That's a time where a lot of the high rated or high priced, but low rated players enter a Nathan Ake or an Adama. A lot of players like this start to get a lot of supply from those packs. And by that time, people are not really using these cards in their teams anymore. They want to upgrade their Adama to somebody like Pepe or to a Mares or to a Lucas Mora or to a Gareth Bale. They're trying to get their coins to upgrade their teams and players like this start to fall to the wayside and their prices start to drop. So I know that we have rising prices and we actually have an extinct Nathan Ake right now, but a lot of people are going to want to upgrade from a Nathan Ake to that Joe Gomez or to another center back in the Prem or another, uh, maybe even another Dutch center back, like a Delict, depending on what kind of team they have. So you're gonna start to see these prizes come back down to where they were and they're gonna even drop lower than where they were in the early access and the even web app time frame stage. So if you have low rated cards, I would even throw Richarlison into this batch. Um, Richarlison is probably gonna maintain his price decently well for a while, but I would look to sell some of these cards I honestly think you want to be ahead of the curve. Watch these prices on Saturday. If there's any cards that go up a decent amount on Saturday, like basically an update, right? If there's an update, people are still buying and the momentum is upwards on Saturday before squad battle rewards. I think honestly, I would cut your ties with a lot of those cards because you have a lot of people right now and you're myself included, right? I still have some cards sitting on my transfer list. There are some cards here that I need to sell. Regulon, Pepe, Porto. I've got a Lucas Hernandez, right? I've got, you know, a nice little like 50, 60K almost here just chilling on my transfer list. And um, I need to know when to sell those cards and get the most money I possibly can for them because that matters, right? At the start of foot, when coins are so precious, that matters. So knowing when to sell these guys is very, very important. That's why I want to talk about the low rated guys first. Players like Sissoko, players like Ndombele, they're going to maintain their price a decent amount because they're still super meta, but they're going to be dropping after that time frame as well. So I would try to sell the low rated dudes. Like again, like an Ake who is extinct on the market. I would sell these dudes sooner rather than later. Definitely before Sunday squad battle rewards, probably on Saturday is when I would get some of these cards out. And you want to get out early again before 
people cut in front of you and start listing their cards and undercutting you on the market and uh, making your cards price drop lower. And that's just what happens a lot after Sunday. So get those low rated cards out sooner rather than later. Anything that is 80 rated or below that doesn't have a super crazy pack weight like a guy like last year's Ferlin Mendy, I would get them out ASAP. Do that quickly. Take your coins, right? On the low rated stuff. Now on the higher rated stuff, you have a bit more of a, maybe, I guess you could say interesting situation because it depends on the type of card that you have. A lot of cards, like ones to watch golds that people are investing in because these cards are going to go out of packs, like Bale, like Havertz. You know, these guys are very expensive. They're probably going to go up even more from these prices that you see right here in the next day or so. And uh, I still think for a lot of these cards, for the cards that were ones to watch as last year, this Gareth Bale card is honestly good enough that if he isn't ones to watch team one, and it's a bit of a risk, right? Because we have two OTW teams this year. He could be in team two very easily, and that means his gold card is in packs for another week, and that means his gold card would drop because some people are buying this card right now because they think it's going to go out of packs and go up. I would just be very careful if you're buying or investing in ones to watch gold items because they have the potential, not even if they're confirmed ones to watches, they might not be in the first OTW team set. They might be in team two. So just be kind of careful with those, and I would honestly look to sell those probably the day or two before ones to watch would come out. Honestly, I'm thinking around the time frame of like maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, because I don't think they're going to release any more OTWs. Maybe one or two, they'll maybe they'll get leaked. I hope they don't get leaked. We haven't had many leak situations. But for those out of pack investments that you make during this time frame, I would look to sell those then to be safe. And if you think they're going to get into team one, just like a Havertz or a Bale could, then I would hold those guys and maybe actually sell them just because of how hype Bale is and how sick his card looks for an 83 rated. This would be a card that I would expect to act like Lucas Hernandez from FIFA 20, where his gold card went to 40K and then went to 60K when he was actually out of packs, um, just because there wasn't as much investing on that card and there wasn't uh, over investing that took place. So Bale being this expensive, there's probably not going to be a lot of over investing, but and that's kind of how I feel about these out of packs ones to watch cards. It's a bit of a gamble. So if you want to take it safe, sell those cards on like Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday before the promo would actually start on that next Friday. So basically like a week from today when this video is going live uh, or yesterday, it might go live on Saturday, who knows? But uh, that was what, that's what I'd say about the ones to watch cards because that's a big, big thing. And I think you just want to take the coins and be safe and sell into the hype there just again because it's early on and you want to be smart with that. Other meta cards, other meta cards like a Leroy Sané, like a Hyun Min Sun, like KDB. These are top tier, top of the line, best in their position, best in their league. These cards are going to continue rising probably into the first two or three weekend leagues, whenever those dates are. And I think I would honestly keep holding these. If it's a super meta card, Mbappe, Neymar, Ronaldo, continue to hold on to those because you're going to want to squeeze out every single possible coin you can. And don't let these guys just sit in your club. Use them, man. It's the early part of the game. Who cares if they're not fresh? You know, that does not matter. The amount of uh, your division rivals matches, the rivals rewards you might get, and maybe even your first set weekend or two weekends of foot champs using these bet these really good cards that you have invested in and having your club for cheap um, could give you an advantage and possibly get you more rewards. So I would say use these cards in your teams as you're starting to play objectives and stuff in foot and these really high rated meta cards, I would look to ship these out um, later after the first weekend league or so, because a lot of these cards from last year, if you look at their graphs, we can go look at Sun's graph really quick. Obviously he was the center forward position change last year. So it's a bit different in terms of uh, how much his price actually was, but look at Sun's graph. He just continually rose into the month of October for that second or third weekend league. He peaked before we had the downturn for Black Friday. And boom, you know, that's kind of where he hit his peak. Now, he hit a really good peak on October 18th as well, where he kind of hit his max price there too. So again, that's about two weeks. And then you have about four weeks actually after the beginning of the game. So that's where I would wait to the rise for those weekend league demand is what's really going to be big for some of these super duper meta cards like a son, Leroy Sané, some of the, those other players that I mentioned. Same thing with meta players in team of the week. The longer that you hold these, the better. This Ben Yedder card, I don't even want to know how expensive 
this card's gonna get. I would not be surprised if this card goes to like 600,000 coins, 700,000 coins for this card if he's meta, which he has to be. People are gonna make him meta. He's the rat. We know it. You know, Bruno Fernandez is gonna be a card that's gonna stay expensive. This Oop Makano is crazy expensive as an inform right now. Vardy is a Premier League striker, gonna be expensive. One thing that could drop Vardy's price, and if you have Vardy, I might be careful because of the if Dominic Calvert Lewin does win Premier League Player of the Month, whenever that voting goes live, whenever we see who's possibly in it, I think he has a good shot to win it. That could be an SBC, uh, kind of like Vardy's Player of the Month from last year in FIFA, that could drop the price of strikers. Depending on how cheap that SBC is, if he's really cheap, has really good stats, you might see a guy like Vardy's in form, get panic sold a bit. So that's just kind of a, a you know situation to think about. There's always that sort of risk though. Other cards coming out and your card dropping. Another, another inform coming out in the same position, same league, but a player with better stats. There's always that kind of risk there. Even with some of these gold cards, you know, maybe like, I don't know, a, a left wing in the Bundesliga gets an inform and it's a really sick card and it's almost as good as Sané. And then maybe you have Sané drop because it's an inform with a dynamic image with similar stats and it just looks that good. That's maybe a bad example, but you kind of get the gist, right? So there's always some sort of risk with holding on these cards because they could just drop because there's always more cards coming onto the game with promos and stuff and informs that EA could put out, especially objectives and once to watch items could affect these, absolutely. But honestly, what you want to do on the really, really meta cards, as I did say, was hold them into that first or second week in league. Just use them in your team. Have fun. Use the good cards. Um, and then, you know, cash them out before that Black Friday time frame. When you do see, like we looked at Chun Min Sun, a lot of those cards going down in price heading into Black Friday and even actually into team of the year as well. So that's a long ways down the line. But a lot of the cards that you buy, if it's low rated, you want to sell it soon. If it's kind of an out of packs card, you can kind of play the waiting game with is it does it actually go out of packs or are you going to sell into the hype? And then if it's a super meta card, you know, even a guy that is 85 rated like an Allen, that's a super meta card hype, stuff like that. You can hold those types of cards longer as we get into the weekend leagues because those are just going to go up. And if you want some reference, go look at some graphs from last year, right? Let's say, you know, a guy like Allen was different last year because he was in obviously and Napoli in the Serie A, so he might react a little bit differently this year to a lot of the hype than he did last year. So always keep that kind of stuff in mind with, with players that are going to get into OTW and just general um, transfers, position changes, hype in general, um, and use other items. Like I said, use other items from last year or from the current year to help you price. That's always that's the biggest tip that I can give somebody at the start of the game, like we're in right now, is compare prices with similar position players and nationality so like for son i would compare him to mane i would compare him to rashford i would compare him to other expensive left mids like sane i would compare these two guys right you know sane and son you know son's a lot more expensive of course but you know you can draw some sort of comparison there to see are they rising the same amount of percentage each day are they dropping both at the same time and stuff like that just to kind of compare and kind of know when that ultimate sell time will be. So hopefully that answers some of the when should I sell times or questions for you dudes because I know a lot of you guys are making bank and you want to know when you can cash out on that bank. Of course, if you're somebody who's a really sick trader and you like to trade and flip cards, selling earlier rather than later is a big investment for you. It's a big time thing for you because you need those coins to continue churning out the trades and churning out the investments and making more coins. It just compounds and compounds. So take that into concept and take that into account as well when you're figuring out when is the best time for you to sell. If you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Food Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace.